Hello friends, welcome to Midlife. Today we will continue yesterday's topic that is inflammation. So yesterday we have studied up to the third step of vascular events. Today we will proceed from the fourth step. So let's start the video. So the number fourth step of vascular event is increased vascular permeability which is the hallmark of acute inflammation. So to fight with the microbe how WBC comes out? What are the events going on that we will discuss in today's lecture? So for the leakage of WBC there should be certain pathway or we can say holes through which it can go out. In the previous figures we have seen that there was continuous endothelial cells without any gaps between them. So how WBC will come out without any gaps? So the gaps are created in the lining of blood vessels that is endothelial cells. Between the endothelial cells the gaps are formed and this is known as vascular permeability. And this is one of the most important step of vascular permeability. Oh sorry, past vascular events. So, in this figure, please appreciate the gaps here. These are the gaps between the endothelial cells. And uh, from these gaps, fluid along with protein is also coming out so edema will increase and this type of edema is known as exudate remember in the initial stage due to increase in hydrostatic pressure in step number three it was called as transudate but later on in the step four due to increase in vascular permeability the Type of edema is exudate type. This leads to escape of proteins rich fluid that is edema is exudate type in the fourth step that is in increased vascular permeability and leukocytes in extravascular space. Most affected vessels are venules. It is responsible for swelling that is tumor seen in acute inflammation. So there are five mechanisms of altered vascular permeability and those are number one formation of endothelial gaps, number two direct endothelial injury, three leukocyte mediated endothelial cell injury, four increased transcytosis, fifth leakage from new blood vessels. So the gaps are created from these five mechanisms. So we will see one by one all these mechanisms. First let's see number one that is formation of endothelial gaps. It is immediate transient response. It is the most common mechanism for increased permeability and it occurs due to contraction of endothelial cell phytoskeleton. So here we can see Several endothelial cells are present with no gaps in the first figure. There is no gaps between the endothelial cells. Now imagine a situation where all the endothelial cells are contracting. And when they contract, gaps are automatically formed between them. So in the second figure, here we can see the endothelial cells are contracted and gaps are formed at their junction. So why it is known as immediate transient response? It is because as soon as these microbes are coming, the endothelial cells immediately contracts, which remains for few seconds. And after contracting, it relaxes again. Now if we see it transversely, then we can see Contraction of endothelial cells with formation of gaps. 
Then why contraction occurs? It is due to some mediators such as histamine, leukotrienes, etc. So here, gaps due to endothelial contraction occurs in venules due to vasoactive mediators that is histamine, leukotrienes, etc. And it is the most common, fast and short-lived and it is reversible. Example is mild thermal injury. So here important mediators are histamine, bradykinin, leukotrienes and later cytokines are also involved here. Now coming on the second mechanism, we have to create gaps to take WBC out in order to fight with the microbe. So what do you mean by direct endothelial cell injury? Here endothelial cells are not contracting. So how will we create a gap in order to take WBC out anyway? So the gaps are created by the microbe itself by causing necrosis of endothelial cells and uh, this way WBC comes out and fight with the microbe. Necrosis can occur at the junction as well as the between the endothelial cells. So number two that is direct endothelial injury is known as immediate, sustained or prolonged response. This response is rapid but long lived. It occurs due to direct injury causing necrosis and deattachment of endothelial cells by toxins, infections or burns. All levels of microcirculation are affected including venules, capillaries and arterioles. Again in transfer section we can see this figure. Here it is direct injury and it occurs in arterioles, capillaries and venules. Due to toxins, burns or chemicals it is fast and may be long lived that is hours to days. Example is moderate to severe burns severe bacterial infection and radiation injury. Now coming on the third mechanism which is known as leukocyte mediated endothelial cell injury. It is known as delayed prolonged that is sustained response. Leukocytes are activated and cause endothelial cell injury. It affects mostly venules and pulmonary and glomerular capillaries. So here we can see that uh, first and second both mechanisms fails. So how WBC will come out? So here WBC itself it will attach to the endothelial cell and then it will form gaps through which it can go out in order to fight with the microbe. It can be at the junction as well as non-junction. And if we see it transversely, we can see here it is the leukocyte dependent injury which occurs mostly in venules, pulmonary capillaries and it is a late response and long lived that is hours. Now let's see fourth step that is increased transcytosis. So what do you mean by transcytosis? Trans means cell inside cell. So here no gaps are created. Still WBC will come out but how? So WBC will enter inside endothelial cell and come on other side. Some vacuoles are also created inside endothelial cells and through that vacuole WBC will come out. So it affects venules and it is caused by formation of vesiculovacular uh, organelles near intra intercellular junction by histamine and BEGF. So in this figure we can see the vacuoles are created in the endothelial cells and due to increased transcytosis the WBC 
comes out of the endothelial cells through these vacuoles and VEGF means vascular endothelium growth factor. Now the fifth step is known as leakage from new blood vessel. It occurs at the site of angiogenesis as new blood vessels are leaky. So, so here in the transfer section we can see the WBC comes out due to the formation of new blood vessel at the sites of angiogenesis which persist until intercellular junction form and gaps are already present here example is healing tumors here nucleus is showing mitosis and spindles in the nucleus now let's come back to the fifth step of vascular event we have already completed the five mechanism of the fourth step that is increased vascular permeability now let's see fifth step that is slowing or stasis so here increased concentration of red cells raises or rises blood viscosity now there are some experiment which will prove these five mechanisms and that is known as triple response it is demonstrated by the Lewis experiment. Lewis induced the changes in the skin of inner aspect of forearm by form stroking with a blunt point. The reaction elicited is known as triple response or red line response. Red line is due to local vasodilation of capillaries and venules. Flare. It is the bright radius surrounding the red line and results from vasodilation of the adjacent arterioles. And will, it is the swelling due to transudation of fluid into the extravascular space. It is due to increased hydrostatic pressure which is known as transudate edema. And uh, if it is due to increase in vascular permeability, it is known as exudate edema. So both of these form will. So now uh, what this Lewis has done? We have already know that he has taken a blunt pen and in the forearm he has given a stroke to himself causing injury, causing physical injury. So how all the events should take place one by one and after that he has noticed three things immediately. After stroke, it becomes red in color, known as red line. And after that area around the red line also becomes red, known as flare. And the whole area swells up, known as wheel. So these are known as triple response. Now from five vascular events, can you tell me why there is this triple response? Now let's do some Q&A. So let's start with the question 1. What is the sequence of events in acute inflammation? A. Vasodilation, stasis, transient vasoconstriction, increased permeability. B. Transient vasoconstriction, Stasis, vasodilation, increased permeability. C. Transient vasoconstriction, vasodilation, stasis, increased permeability. D. Transient vasoconstriction, vasodilation, increased permeability and then stasis. So what is the answer of this? So the correct answer here is D that is transient vasoconstriction then after vasodilation then increased permeability that is vascular permeability and then stasis. Now let's proceed to the next question. Question 2. In acute inflammation due to the contraction of endothelial cell cytoskeleton which of the following results? A. Delayed transient increase in permeability. B. 
early transient increase in permeability c delayed permanent increase in permeability d early permanent increase in permeability so what is the answer its answer is b that is early transient increase in permeability now let's proceed to the question number 3 increased permeability in acute inflammation is due to a histamine b il2 c tgf j3 d fgf so the correct answer is b that is il2 now let's proceed to the question number 4 most characteristic feature of acute inflammation is a vasoconstriction b vascular stasis c increased vascular permeability and d margination of leukocyte so what is the answer answer is increased vascular permeability which is the most characteristic feature of acute inflammation now let us come to question number five so first to appear in acute inflammation is a vasodilation b vasoconstriction c increased vascular permeability d decreased vascular permeability so what is the correct answer the correct answer is vasoconstriction as we have already studied the first step of vascular event was focal or transient vasoconstriction then after vasodilation then increased vascular permeability so now let us see question 6 rubber inflammation is due to a dilation of arterioles b increased vascular permeability c increased viscosity of blood and d edema so here the correct answer is a that is dilation of arterioles due to the dilation of arterioles rubber that is redness is seen in inflammation and you should know all the cardinal signs learned by heart now let us proceed to question number seven all of the following vascular changes are observed in acute inflammation except a vasodilation b stasis of blood c increased vascular permeability d decreased hydrostatic pressure so what is the correct answer the correct answer is d that is decreased hydrostatic pressure now let's proceed to the question 8 the following host tissue responses can be seen in acute inflammation except a exudation b vasodilation c margination d granuloma inflammation so here the correct answer is d that is granuloma inflammation so this was all about today's lecture tomorrow we will continue with the six cellular events please like share and subscribe my channel and thanks for watching